Hi there. In this tutorial we're going to build the Spyderco Techno. It's kind of a neat looking knife, I think. And uh, complicated enough to allow me to demo some actual workflow stuff, but not so complicated that I'm going to bog down with anything. So this is what it looks like from one side. The other side looks like this. And this isn't actually what it's... This, this photo is kind of a composite. I used the same blade in both of them and just photoshopped the other side over it. And the reason I did that is the images, in order to switch them out in Fusion so that they stay exactly the same, it's a really good idea to make sure that the image size is exactly the same and then the, the dimensions of your reference are the same within that image. So, you know, depending on what side I'm looking at, I'll be able to, to switch out the reference and it should work just fine. Uh, this is what the top looks like. You can see there's a big gap here with a kind of a blue plastic spacer there. And you can get a sense for the taper of the blade. And then that's also sort of here in uh, the, the tip and the underside detail shots. So you can see how the, the, the tip tapers down. It's really thick for most of the, the top of the surface. And then it gets super thin, obviously, uh, at the bottom. And then this little piece of steel here is kind of what locks in to hold the, uh, the blade in place. And you would push it this way to fold the, the blade back in. So I'm not sure if I'm going to want to go as far as like actually modifying this so that it's like, you know, tilted in a little bit. But uh, depending on how long this thing takes, I, I may go ahead and do that as well. So. Very important, just to recap, that you get your reference lined up as closely as possible. Now, another thing I was able to do is by Googling this, I was able to get some specs. So I have the length overall so I can calibrate my image, and then I've got my blade thickness so I can get the, uh, the, the blade thickness nailed down perfectly. And someplace else uh, on that same page, but not here, I, I got uh, the dimensions of this hole, which I think is 13 millimeters. I'll, I'll confirm that before we cut it. Uh, so with that said, let's begin. I'm going to hop over to Fusion real quick. And we will go ahead and uh, insert a an attached canvas. And let's see. Go ahead and click on the Select Image icon. And then I'm going to grab uh, Side 2 because it's got a little bit less stuff going on. And I can just get kind of that uh, silhouette. And we will put it on this face there. I'm going to zoom in a little bit with the uh, middle mouse wheel. So I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, or I guess negative 90 degrees there. Hit OK. And now I can go to Canvases, right click, and we'll go to Calibrate. And then head over to the right view. So the overall length is going to be 152 millimeters. So click that point and then that point and we'll say uh, 152 and then it'll get much much bigger and now that we've we've calibrated that I'm going to be able to use the other measurements to make sure that everything is just perfect so we can go ahead and add some sketches but actually before we do some sketches I'm going to do one more thing here I'm going to edit canvas and I want to make it display through and then we'll reduce the opacity just a little bit make it kind of easier to see what we're doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, the, the sketch for the blade. So I'll go to Sketch, Create Sketch. And this right here, this section, is going to be just a straight line. And then we'll have a spline going like that, and then another spline kind of going like this, and then another line kind of connecting it back up here. It's okay if there's some extra down here, we can always clean that up. And you can kind of get a sense, it's a little bit tricky to see, but once we get this blade extruded, the cut here is probably pretty angled and then just like smoothly transitions into this form up here. So we're going to put kind of a cut somewhere all around here and then uh, blend that into that form. So let's go ahead and start with the sketch. We'll make a line from there to there. Right click and hit OK. Back to sketch and we'll make a spline here. And maybe something like that. And then I'll click here as well, and I'm going to hit OK. Now, there's a reason I don't want to try to continue it down. If this is a point, I'm going to be able to get uh, much more predictable beveling and, and uh, or filleting and chamfering. If I try to make that a tiny little round curve, it's going to interfere with the uh, the radius that I can that I can fill it on this edge. So always a good idea 
to whenever you're doing your your your, your sketching phase to not uh, add any round stuff that you you can't just wait a little while and do on your uh, your geometry because it's going to be a lot more flexible. So over here, I'd like to transition this one here. So I'm going to click on the handle and we'll make this horizontal. Kind of went the wrong way there. Try that one more time. So I'm going to bend it down. And you can see it actually snaps there. And once it snaps, we get a pretty good little handle thing that we can use to scoot that around, approximate that. And I'm going to kind of move this guy. And I may need to add a point. Whoops, looks like I'm dragging the whole thing there. Let me make sure I, I only grab the the, uh, the actual point on the spline. So make the handle a little bit longer and just try to match that curve as closely as I can. I may need to add another one, but I, I think that's going to be hopefully okay. This one might be able to scoot just a little bit. And we can give it a little spin there. All right. I think that's probably good enough. Let's go ahead and do the bottom now. So I'll do a sketch and a spline. Also, I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not, but the fewer points you can you can put on your splines, the better. The more the, the the more flexible they'll be when it comes to doing stuff to the resulting geometry. So this probably needs to be horizontal. When it's got this little mark on it, that means it's constrained. If you look over here, and the uh, horizontal and vertical constraints, you can see that it's got that uh, uh, vertical and horizontal sign, and that's the same thing right there. So now that that's kind of locked in, we can just kind of tune tune the uh, the spline handles here. Try to get that as close as possible. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and hit uh, sketch and line. So I'll start my line here and just I'm gonna. Just make it horizontal, or I mean, uh, um, uh, sort of vertically parallel or whatever. Like that, and then I'll make another line going through there. So now that's my shape. So all this stuff over here, we can totally cut out kind of once we get everything else figured. That stuff is going to be pretty easy. Uh, so overall, we've got one, one line, a spline, a spline, a line, and another line. So very, very simple. And I'm going to hit Stop Sketch and go to press pool and we're going to go uh, symmetric and let's head back over to the reference here so my blade thickness is going to be 4.5 millimeters so I'm going to say 4.5 divided by 2 because we wanted to go out that distance in both directions and now I can hit OK so there is the block out for the blade in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the exact same thing here for the handle.